Good day class. For this video, I will be discussing to you the advantages and disadvantages of international flow of funds. So the previous video, na discuss natin what is international flow of funds. Na determine natin yung uh, iba't ibang uh, types of international flow of funds. Okay? What does it do to the economy? And ano yung uh, iba't ibang uh, factors na involved para magkaroon ng exchange of transaction when it comes to international flow of funds. Okay? In this video, I will be discussing to you naman the advantages and disadvantages. Okay? One advantage dyan is it increases the aggregate demand. Diba sabi nga natin, ano, because of international uh, multinational company, diba, one, one, one factor that is involved dito sa exchange of flow of funds when it comes to international setting is or are these multinational companies sila yung nagdadala dito sa atin ng exchange of ano flow of funds between their country and our country no because of these multinational companies na nag-ooperate na sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo ay syempre ang naging resulta nun is gumanda yung uh, trading system when it comes to um, commodities, products in the in that ano in that case, I it somehow help to increase the demand of the consumer. Kasi mas dumami yung choices nila, more products, more choices, more opportunity para bumili sila. Thus resulting to increase in demand. Okay. Next one is production capacity. Siyempre, nag-increase yung demand so it has to be matched with increase in production also. No? So, nakatulong din siya sa paglago uh, ng ekonomiya or sa, sa pagpuproduce ng maramihan kasi nga uh, these multinational companies bring in so much ano, so much opportunity not just sa mga consumers but rather on the employment sector. Okay? So, ito ay nakakatulong sa malaki ang product, uh, production or production ng mga commodities ng mga produkto na dala ng mga multinational companies na to. Technological advancement. One advantage also. Okay? So, syempre, because of this technologies na na-introduce sa atin ng mga iba't ibang uh, uh, coming from different countries na dala ng mga multinational company na to ay di somehow ay nakatulong dito sa atin na adapt na rin natin siya okay when it comes to this technological advancement gaya, gaya halimbawa di ba cellphone okay these cellphones are originally from other countries like the iPhone or the Samsung hindi naman siya gawa dito sa Philippines or siguro meron din dito but parts of it or bits of it are being done here sa Philippines but hindi lang sa Philippines kundi may iba may iba't iba pang bansa na pinanggagalingan yung mga um, ano na to mga parts ng uh, isang cellphone and thus contributing to the final output ng isang cellphone na dinadala ngayon dito sa bansa natin okay so yun yung uh, magandang uh, isang magandang idulot ng uh, international exchange of products hindi tayo nalimitahan sa produkto na napuproduce natin but somehow ay na-introduce din sa atin or nadala dito sa atin yung mga products na to na may iba't ibang types of technologies na na-introduce sa bansa natin. The surplus and the financial account of the balance of payment. Okay, if you will remember, this sa previous lesson ko, we have two types of balance uh, what is balance of payment ulit ulitin ko balance of payment is the total accumulation of ano of uh, income when it comes to import and export ng mga public and private sectors or companies ano ito yung total accumulation of that ano of the total income kumbaga when it comes to export and, and import and we have two types of balance of payment diba if you will remember we have surplus balance of payments and the deficit balance of payment because of this inter international flow of funds ay at least nakatulong siya when it comes to the surplus aspect of balance of payment pag sinabing surplus mas madami yung ini-export 
or ine-export rather sa ini-import. Okay, yun yung kaibahan ng balance of payment in a deficit manner at balance of payment in a surplus manner. Sa surplus manner, the export is more than what we import. Okay, whereas doon naman sa deficit, mas madaming nai-import kumpara doon sa ine-export. And each of these characteristics have different advantages and disadvantages. May kanya-kanya sila. May advantage yung uh, surplus, meron ding disadvantages. Ganun din naman sa uh, deficit, meron siyang advantages and meron din naman disadvantages. Balikan nyo na lang sa ating previous topic at na-discuss ko naman siya lahat doon. Okay, the inflow of foreign currencies because of international flow of funds ay din eh, nagkaroon tayo ng pagkakataon na magkaroon ng reserves when it comes to international foreign currencies. Meron tayong yeah, dollar reserves, meron tayong uh, euro, yen. So, lahat ng yon ay nagkaroon tayong opportunity na at least mapaikot din sa bansa natin or magamit din natin sa iba't ibang forms of capital formation. Okay? So, na-discuss natin yung disadvantages. Siyempre, meron din siyang, ah, na-discuss natin yung advantages. Siyempre, meron din siyang disadvantages. Ano naman yung disadvantages ng international flow of funds? Tingnan natin. Loss of domestic players. Ayan, isa to sa pinaka-masaklap pinaka na mangyari. Especially sa mga maliliit na businesses or entrepreneurs. Ay di, yun nga, siyempre, because of these multinational companies or foreign ano foreign products ay din nagkaroon ngayon tayo ng competition when it comes to international products or foreign products and the domestic products or the locally made products and syempre most of the time ay syempre tayo mga Pilipino minsan mas ginugusto natin yung mga imported products di ba ganun naman talaga tayo and this somehow destroys the competition Diba, nabanggit ko din dyan yung monopolistic effect. Ano, so, namamonopolize niya yung isang uh, trading system or yung isang uh, product when it comes to ano, consumers. No? So, dito ay di nawawalan ngayon or naapektuhan talaga ng malaki yung mga domestic players o yung maliliit na nagnenegosyo. No? May mga pagkakataon pa nga na mas mura yung mga ini-import no, gaya nung sa bigas okay, there was a time na nagkaroon tayo ng shortage of rice production so ang nangyari ay di no choice but to import sa other Asian countries so ang naging resulta, since meron tayong subsidy when it comes to importation of products, if, diba, if you will if you will recall, the other subsidies are like benefits na ini-encourage naman ngayon ng ating government okay para lalong ma-encourage nga itong mga multinational companies na uh, eh, ano, na makipag-negotiate uh, makipag, uh, sa bansa natin kasi somehow it also helps the economy to grow. No? So yun nga, these are just some of the subsidies or benefits na binibigay ng ating bansa when it comes to imported goods. No? Um, lesser tariff or mas mababa yung tax siyempre, pas, 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 mas mababa ang tax, edi ang resulta nun, edi mas mababa din yung presyo ng mismong produkto. So, nagka, uh, nagkaroon nga ng no competition, no? and nangyari nga dyan is mas naging mura pa yung imported rice kumpara sa local rice. Diba? So, kumain ka ng imported rice, nas, mas nakatipid ka pa. So, isa yun sa dagok na naranasan ng ating mga magsasaka. Kaya nga, di ba, uh, meron din tayong sinabi dito sa ating uh, topic na kinokontrol ngayon yung pag-i-import or mini-minimize or hinuhold muna temporarily. Gaya ngayon, nakahold muna temporarily yung pag-i-import ng uh, bigas kasi nga ay masyado nang na, ano, naapektuhan yung local industry. Masyado nagiging kawawa yung ating mga magsasaka. Ano? Siyempre, namumuhunan sila tapos mahina yung benta, hindi eh, lalo silang ano. So, kumbaga, Uh, let's support muna. Yun naman yung ginagawa ng ating government pag talagang hindi na, pag nagkakaroon tayo ng problema when it comes to rice production. So, syempre, may choice. Kung baga, meron tayong plan B. So, yung plan B nga mag-import ng iba't ibang, uh, sa iba't ibang bansa ng uh, bigas. 
pag hindi na kayang supplyan ng ating uh, mga magsasaka yung pangangailangan ng buong Pilipinas when it comes to ano consumption of rice. So plan B, mag-import muna tayo. Pero, yun nga, sabi ko dati, hindi siya pang matagalan. For the meantime lamang. Kasi pag tayo import ng import, import ng import, eh baka doon naman tayo pumasok sa balance of payment in a deficit manner. ba diba? Mas madali na kayong in-import kesa sa in-export. Okay? So, kawawa naman. Isang nga maapektuhan dito ay yung mga local farmers natin o yung domestic players na sinasabi. Another disadvantage, tax minimization and evasion. Okay? So, isa din to sa... Kasi, syempre, diba sabi ko nga kanina, meron tayong uh, subsidies na ibinibigay sa mga... Um, imported goods or sa mga multi or sa mga MNCs na to. Okay, so anong nangyayari dyan? Isa nga sa mga subsidy na to ay yung minimization of taxes and it come to a point na itong mga MNC na to ay uh, tumatakas na rin when it comes to paying their obligations sa tax or sa government. Okay, tax evasion. No? So, isa yon sa disadvantage din na pwede mangyari. Another one, Money laundering, ayan. Isa din to. Pag sinabi kasi ng laundering, ito yung uh, way na pagkuha ng pera in a, ano, ill manner or hindi tamang paraan. Okay? So, yun yung definition ng money laundering. To sum it up, The international flow of funds takes place when the transactions of buying and selling take place between the international market by means of international business that is exported and imported from one country to another. Ito ay uh, summary ng ating uh, topic. The balance of payment shows the value of all transactions that took place between the domestic and the foreign residents in a specific period of time. The international flow of funds assists the countries to make themselves technologically advanced and help them to promote trade between them and the developed countries which is helpful for the customers as they will be able to have a more variety of products and service from all the service providers in all over the world. And last one, overall the international flow of funds is good in most of the aspects for the development of a country and the world economy. So generally speaking naman, okay, after presenting the disadvantage, after presenting the advantages and disadvantages, generally ay mas lamang naman yung advantages. Sabi nga dito sa ating uh, lesson or sa ating module, overall the international flow of funds is good in most of the aspects. So mas malaki. Although may disadvantage din, ano, pero kung titingnan natin, kung titingnan natin kumbaga, kumbaga sa tao from head to toe, kung titingnan natin siya ay mas maganda yung naging epekto kasi along with this international flow of funds ay hindi hindi lang yung funding eh. we're not just talking of money here but rather the culture the technology okay na naiintroduce sa atin ng iba't ibang bansa na to papunta sa bansa natin that also at least somehow ano help us to become a better country not just on the monetary aspects but rather may iba pang aspeto na nakakatulong sa bansa natin. Okay? So, if you have no more questions, that concludes the advantages and disadvantages of international monetary fund. Okay, so thank you and I will be uploading this video sa ating classroom and I will be also uploading a new classwork regarding sa topic na to. Thank you and have a good day.